Who says you can't learn anything from the preseason? The Chargers just got whipped in their last game against the Saints, but Joshua Kelly staked his claim as RB2. You are locked on Chargers. Your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for over six seasons. But we're heading into our fifth season as the host of Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Hey, I guess we're right in the middle of that fifth season right now. I mean, the preseason is over. Thank you guys for making us your first listen on this post-game show tonight. We appreciate you guys as always. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel so you can get you know, notifications for when we premiere things like this. And also following the show for free wherever you get your podcast from. But, David, the preseason is over, finally. It started exactly as I thought. You like it, you love it, you hate it, you need to see real football. But there was a lot to gain from this game, right? And there was a lot that we did learn, including, I think, Joshua Kelly putting the exclamation point with an actual hurdle on the RB2 spot. I mean, he looked absolutely great tonight. It was great to see that in the confidence, especially going up against Saints starters. Those were not scrubs he was doing that against. Jalen Guyton looked good. Michael Bandy, on the other hand, I don't know if he was able to do enough or even if he really ever had a chance to. But there were some other guys who impressed as well, like Braden Fehoko, who had a little scare, but I do think did enough, more than enough, you know, to be the guy that makes the team out of that defensive line room. And unfortunately, JT Woods has still shown that he isn't ready to be trusted in a regular season game, unfortunately. Got a lot of valuable reps, had a couple of good reads, but not quite enough, I think, to earn time on the field with this Chargers really, really talented defense. But, David, it starts with Joshua Kelly, and wow, I mean, we wanted someone to create separation. We thought he did after the first game, kind of came back to earth the second game. Put an exclamation point on this one. I mean, he had a hell of a performance. I really was excited with what I saw from Josh Kelly going up against the starting Saints defense. Yeah, it's the Josh Kelly we saw that really showed some quickness, showed some burst, showed some decisiveness with the holes that he was hitting tonight, uh, had some chunk plays. I mean, his overall stat line looks very, very nice. Six carries, 40 yards, 6.7 yards per carry, and 15 yards as a long where he had that awesome hurdle to pick up a third and 12 third and 14 which, third and 14 actually excuse me uh i mean that's really really impressive obviously a really nice play design and really good effort from josh kelly to cap off a really really strong performance in this game tonight yeah and like i think it was kind of one of those things where i mean everyone's yelled at their tv on a third and 14 draw play right and you're like what are you doing oh 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 my god he hurdled that like yeah. it was just <laughs> one of those moments but it just for him specifically, it's not just, you know, about what he did in this game. He did struggle in the second game. The blocking was pretty bad throughout, really, on most of the preseason, honestly. But at the same time, you compare that, you know, with Larry Roundtree having another just mediocre game, right, and just kind of having a lukewarm offseason at best. Isaiah Spiller is now injured, so we'll see what happens when he comes back. Joshua Kelly is the dude now, and I think the Chargers should have some more confidence at that position. He held on to the football. He pass protected well, which was a huge part of him winning that job. And he just looked more athletic, more decisive, more explosive. And I think that's the great thing. But I do think that Larry Roundtree is still going to make the team. We're going to be getting into our roster predictions. Those are going to be releasing on Monday for the final 53-man roster predictions. He wasn't playing at all in the second half, David. And with Isaiah Spiller, I think that's probably... All, you know, it really took. I mean, it seems like at this point, Larry Rancher is going to make the team, even if he didn't have like a great performance in this one. Yeah, I mean, Larry looked good at on, on like a run or two in the beginning of the game. You know, he showed some good uh, you know, fine, tough running yeah. on the inside. But, you know, the overall stat line for him, again, another night that, you know, doesn't look good overall. A couple of flashes here and there. But, yeah, at, at this point, you know, with the uncertainty with Isaiah Spiller, I think Larry Roundtree is uh, also going to make this team. I mean, the yeah. four running backs, not exactly the type of, of roster construction that I Pref would prefer here sure. but you know just the writing is on the wall with this it just seems like you know the indication is there that the chargers are going to keep four running backs 
Yeah, and moving on to a different position, I thought the wide receivers, right, and Jalen Guyton specifically had some impressive moments. I mean, for him, getting another deep ball in this game from Chase Daniel, who also played really well in this one. If there was a competition for QB2, it would have been over after yeah. tonight because Chase Daniel played much, much better than Easton Stick did. But Jalen Guy and David, I mean, I think continuing to prove like, hey, don't forget about me in this offense and what I bring to the table. Absolutely. Another big, deep bomb to Jalen Guyton uh, makes a really nice catch there on a really nice throw. And just, hey, that's what he does. That's what he brings to the table. He's done it consistently since he's been with the Chargers. You know that, you know, if you throw the ball deep up to Jalen Guyton, there's a very good chance that he's going to come down with it. He has just done that time after time in the regular season here in the preseason. Jalen Guyton just remember reminding everybody that the deep threat of the Chargers is still Jalen Guyton. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he is the deep threat. He looked good in this game. He had another catch for 10 yards as well. But I think his impressive camp has gotten overlooked by how impressive Josh Palmer's camp was. And Josh Palmer obviously came into it with the hype train. So I think people were much more willing to kind of jump on that bandwagon, making it a little bit easier to forget about someone like Jalen Guyton, who yeah. has gotten better every season, does have the most speed on the Chargers. Why, at least in their wide receiving core. So I do think that was nice to see from him. A nice little cherry on top of a pretty solid offseason for Jalen Guyton. But unfortunately, David, I don't know if it was going to be enough for Michael Bandy to make the team. He ends up in this game with three receptions for 30 yards. Still ended up being the team's, you know, number two receiver behind Jalen Guyton. But we already had our, you know, sus you know, suspicions that he might not make the roster, even if he did have another really good performance. After a performance like this, I don't think, you know, if they already wanted him on the team, I don't think he cost himself a roster spot with this. But with the way we kind of see them constructing this roster and him just kind of having a pedestrian game in this one, not helped out at all by Easton Stick, I'll add. Yeah. I think it's probably the writing might be on the wall there, which is unfortunate for a guy who obviously, I mean, it's hard to imagine him having a much better offseason than he had with the Chargers. No, hey, Michael Bandy can can be proud of the work that he put out there every single day that he was wearing a Chargers uniform this offseason, from OTAs yeah. to training camp. He really did everything that he possibly could. And maybe Probably. he makes it, right? We yeah. don't know for and, sure. And, yeah. just and maybe seen. he makes it. But it just seems like, you know, this is a guy that's, you know, trying to climb Mount Everest, unfortunately, here with the Chargers, trying to earn a spot that's, you know, maybe not even available or even present, you know, right. with the, the current, you know, wide receivers that are on the team. So, but hey, you know, very impressive for Michael Bandy. He, he did everything he could. He probably didn't have the type of performance in this last game that is really going to put him over the top and earn him right. that role. But he did everything he could. And, you know, I'm very proud of what he was able to do this offseason. Yeah. And I mean, you're definitely pulling for him if he doesn't make the Chargers, right? You hope, hey, maybe he catches on somewhere else where they don't have as loaded of a wide receiver room. Right. Let's be honest. Like, it would have been great to have him for an injury, obviously. And if Sam, you know, if he ends up on the practice squad, like his number definitely could get called this year. It did last season for yeah. a second. So, like, it would be nice to have. He would be great depth. He wouldn't have been able to really show his skill set if he made the Chargers as wide receiver six, right? Like, yeah. that would have been really tough to do. There's not – like, we're wondering how they're going to get DeAndre Carter involved enough. You know what yeah. I mean? And Donna Parham involved enough when he comes yeah. back. Like, there's so, so many, many mouths, mouths to, to feed. feed, man. Yeah. Totally. So, like, it, it might not be the worst thing in the world if some other team picks him up on waivers, if he doesn't make the Chargers. Would I rather have him than Larry Roundtree? Yes. Yeah. But I rather have him on the roster than Easton Stick to hoard receivers because I don't think it's a bad thing to hoard receivers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would, of course. But at the same time, it seemed like the Chargers were like, okay, let's put him out at kick returner. Maybe he yeah. does something there, you know, where it's like, ah, oh, we have to keep this guy. You know, yeah. it looked like the Chargers were kind of looking for ways he could be an impact player as a special teams player, something they said they valued last year in the last wide receiver spot. And one of the reasons, you know, some guys got cut last year, you know, Tyron Johnson being yeah. that guy. So Michael Bandy. I think he did pretty much everything he could this offseason. He gave himself the best chance. I'm definitely pulling for him. We'll see what happens. But I do think another young Chargers player put a stamp on his, you know, on preseason and offseason performance. And in this, in this one, I think Braden Fehoko should absolutely make this roster, especially after the game that he had on Friday night against the Saints. So we'll talk about Braden Fehoko and also JT Woods going the opposite way and feeling like you have less trust in him after another game with most multiple missed tackles. But before we get into that, I do need to tell you guys about something that everyone can use every once in a while. I think we've all been in a pinch where we've been down on money. We just paid rent. You have an unexpected expense that comes up, and that's where the Dave app can come in and help because with their 
app that you can get up to $500 instantly with their extra cash. And that's something that I think sounds great because, I mean, we've all kind of been in a spot where you needed that. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when those unexpected expenses come up. Now Dave can help you get out of it in a pinch when you really need it. There's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills, and you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out with no hangups because there's no interest, no credit check needed. If you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download the Dave app and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now, guys. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for the extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Back here with the Chargers post-game show after the Chargers had their final preseason game against the Saints, which is, you know, something that was a very sloppy game. <laughs> I'm very excited. The preseason a typical was last preseason game, right? Totally, yeah. totally. I mean, it, it was a slap fest for sure, but yeah. we did get to take some things away from him, and that's kind of really all we were hoping for, including Braden Fehoko, I think, bouncing back and having a really strong preseason game to end, you know, his preseason and offseason with his best foot forward to try to make the Chargers roster. He had a tackle for loss in this game. Felt like he had a tackle for loss in pretty much every game and every practice that we ever saw. And to me, I always said I thought he's been kind of one of the most impressive defensive linemen, you know, regardless of where they're at in the pecking order. He had another strong performance here, David, and I think he's definitely done enough, in my opinion, to sew up a roster spot. I mean, it's not that I'd be surprised if he doesn't make it because he was playing in there till like the la- literally the last time he was yeah. on the field. So like that's yeah. usually not a good sign. But so was Christian Covington. Tito Bonio was playing late too. So I don't know if we can take all of that into account. I mean, I just, how can he not make the team at this point? Yeah, I mean, it seems like he's really been strong throughout the entire offseason. He's been a guy that's been a constant presence in the middle, a guy who's been really difficult to move, has been a guy that's really been okay and, and really kind of willing to take on those double team blocks. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that you kind of have. You have to have that attitude if you're playing into your defensive line. It's not always about making the play, but it's about helping other people around you make the play. And I think he does a good job of that on the inside. And like I said before, I feel like this is a great guy for the locker room. He's a great glue guy. People really enjoy Braden Fehoko. He fits in really well. He's a guy that really helps with that team cohesion and that team chemistry. So I think that he has really put himself in a very good position to earn a role with the Chargers. And hopefully this time, after a lot of back and forths, he can be here to stay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I just think he's done more than enough. And I think he does add an element of physicality to this Chargers defensive line room that they need because that's not what Morgan Fox is known for. That's not what Jerry Tillery is known for. And we now know. Jerry Tillery is going to make the team as well because he did not play in this game basically all but sewing up what we already kind of knew, which is he's going to make this roster. Same with Morgan Fox in this one. So I think that for both those guys, we didn't really ever think they were in big trouble, except for David did earlier, but we don't have to talk about that right now. (laughs) But for Braden Fehoko, it's like such a big problem for the Chargers last season, specifically in run defense, was like the line of scrimmage getting reset, basically meaning like the ball was snapped, and now your defensive linemen are two yards behind yeah, the line of scrimmage, right? The they're getting pushed yeah. off the ball. Braden Fehoko, even when he's not making plays, he's not moving. <laughs> they're yeah, not yeah. moving him. He's such a hard dude to move. I had tweeted that out. Just like He just seems like a very tough dude to kind of get out of the way. Yeah. And that it, that does have value, right? That does Definitely. have something. And I do think he probably heard me kind of talking smack about him, saying he didn't have any pressures the entire preseason so far in 17 pass rush attempts. <laughs> he did get a nice pressure in this one where he was trying to chase down Ian Book. And that was nice to see him, you know, getting some run as a pass rusher, too. I, I mean, David, I just think the other thing, too, is like how much this guy has improved. I mean, I remember yeah. watching him at LSU and I was like, I don't really get it. I don't know if he even yeah. has enough to make the team. Like, I, yeah. you know, I'm not, I don't necessarily see it. The Chargers saw it in him. Mm-hmm. They had him. They kept him, brought him along last season on the practice squad. He trained. He got better. And he's gotten so much better from that point to this point. It's like, well, what else can we get from this dude, right? Why not keep this dude around and see if he's just scratching the surface of a dude who, you know, could be a starter someday? Well, I'm just happy that now I think the Chargers really understand what roles certain guys should be playing. I I feel like they understand who their run stoppers are going to be. And hopefully Braden Fehoko is a part of those plans. It's going to be Austin Johnson and Sebastian Joseph Day and guys that are brought in to be pass rushers 
are going to be your Morgan Fox and your Jerry Tillery. I just feel like that that mix last year was not correct. They it took a long time for them to figure out what certain guys do best. And when I they think, just didn't have the dudes, right? I yeah, mean, that's a, no, that's a big part right. of it. Like, You're right. And now I feel like they have a lot of dudes to come in and do the roles they need them to do. I just like the look of the room a lot better now. Yeah, it, it's a much better put together room, right? And, yeah. and you're right. And not only do you know the Chargers know what guys should go in what roles, they have the right guys for the roles they need to deploy them in now, right? Exactly. They didn't have a Morgan Fox last year. They had one dude who was meant to be a vast rusher, and it was Jerry Tillery. Yeah. And it was all on his shoulders on the inside. That can be alleviated a little bit now. I better not see Jerry Tillery on a goal line defense package. That's Please all we're not. really asking for, right? Because that's yes. the situation they were put in last year. Exactly. And I mean, Jerry Tillery, once they get into games, like he made the team. Right. I don't know if he showed a ton. He didn't show me that, you know, he's not to me. I should expect him to be a much better this year, but he'll have a chance. It's a contract yeah. year for him. He should be very incentivized. But oh, yeah. I hope Brandon Bayhoka makes Definitely this there. team. And I think that this defensive line group, when we do this roster prediction, I think we're going to feel a lot better about it this year than we even did last year. But it probably comes at the expense of Christian Covington, too. So we'll have that conversation, <laughs> you know, on Sunday leading into Monday. So I do also want to talk about JT Woods, though, because. I wanted to focus on this show about guys who are going, you know, had a big skin in the game, right? All of yeah. these guys we've talked about, even Jalen Guyton, you know, big skin in the game as far as snaps that he's trying to get on this offense. For the defensive side, we wanted to keep seeing something from safety JT Woods. And it was another game, David, where you see the flashes. I mean, it's like, it's so crazy in this because it's like, you see exactly why they drafted him. And then you kind of also see, hey, exactly maybe why they shouldn't have drafted him so high, you know? Yeah. To a certain extent, and obviously I'm not, you know, writing the book or closing the book on JT Woods by any means. But, David, this was the third consecutive preseason game where he missed multiple tackles. I mean, he had two more open field tackles in this game, vivid in my mind, that I just had him sliding off of dudes, right? And it just seems like right now, I don't know how the Chargers can go into this season and trust him to be out there getting snaps in, you know, precious moments, in, in moments that are going to cost you the playoffs potentially, you know, because that's how close the NFL is. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it reminds me a, a lot of Chris Rumpf last year. I mean, to the guy that was getting close, you know, that was in some good situations that showed some skills. Probably wasn't big enough didn't yet. didn't have enough weight, right? Didn't yeah. have enough good size. And totally. I think the same thing for me is JT Woods. I just feel like he's a guy who has obvious coverage skills. like, And, and he will be utilized in those situations, I think, at, at times because there's no denying the, the, tools, the ability yeah. to close, the ability to read and react. That is there. But the, the tackling is still a major problem. He is still an ankle hunter. He's still trying to you know, bring people down by the by the ankles, and that's not going to work in the NFL. Those guys are just going to step out of those tackles and keep moving, as JT Woods should be very well aware of at this moment in time. This is a guy that needs to focus on wrapping up, a guy that needs to get in the gym, put on some good weight. Um, I feel like this might be a year where it's going to take some a little bit more time than we had originally anticipated for JT sure. Woods to be a real factor. And the, the the good thing for JT Woods and the Chargers is they don't need to rely on JT Woods being that big of a contributor here in year one. Well, and even last week, Ronaldo Hill was still talking about, hey, we still want to get him out there in certain packages, right? So it's yeah. like leading into this game, it's like the coaching staff still wanted to get him on the field and like still thinks he can be a, a contributor to this Chargers yeah. defense. Alohi Gilman, the guy he's really competing with, didn't play in this game just tough man i mean I, I i think the great thing about jt woods in particular is like today yeah i almost had a four yard tackle for loss yeah you almost had an interception that bounced off a dude's hands hard to you know kind of hold that against and that was like one of the wildest preseason plays i've ever seen for those who didn't see Crazy. diving catch looks like it hits the ground flies like 20 yards more downfield receiver runs into down it was yeah. crazy insane play i can't believe what i saw i didn't know that that was something that we were actually going to see in an nfl game i thought for sure that ball had hit the deck uh, i didn't know how that propelled forward and of course the saints are you know they run it into the end zone like it's a touchdown but that sure. play does get blown dead but it's also like of course this happens in the preseason this is the only time that we see plays like this and it's just like okay thank god yeah this Type of football is over, and the next time we see the Chargers line up, strap it up, and wear those beautiful uniforms that they are going to be lining up and doing it for real. 
Yeah, for sure. But going back to JT Woods, I mean, I think the nice thing is, is he's very willing to tackle. He almost had yeah. a tackle for like a four yard loss. He shot through the gap. He tried to make the tackle. He wants to tackle people, right? I mean, he's not he shying away from the contact. It's just he's not big enough. The form isn't there yet. And it's just those tackles could lead to touchdowns yes. in the regular season. So I think there's a lot to work with there. We'll see, you know, if he can get much bigger and still keep those special qualities right i mean obviously he has a little bit of speed to spare i think he could lose you oh, know point yeah. zero three, <laughs> and you know gain 10 pounds and i think everyone would be okay with that i think he'd still be plenty fast Definitely. but I, I think you see it it's just yeah it is going to be a development kind of thing with him and once the season starts that's the big thing you're game planning right these yeah. practices aren't meant to try to you know get these young guys better for the most part right, right. it's about how are they going to beat the team in front of them that week so the training camp portion of this off season is over. Now it's game planning. Now it's getting the best guys out there to play. JT Woods is going to make this team. There was never any doubt about that. We just hope that he would be able to carve a role out on this defense because of the skill set that he brings, because we can all see the tools we want. We know what that could be, yeah. but now you also see what the downside of that is as well. And it just, I don't think the risk and reward there for the chargers is worth it, especially on a loaded defense and, and two good safeties, you know, one of an all pro, all world safety, but that is going to wrap things up for today's show though. We will be back with you guys very soon. You won't have to wait long because on Sunday night, we're recording our final 53 man roster prediction. So we're going to have on Monday who we think is going to make this team for the final time. I'm excited to see what this team ends up looking like. And then next week we have a giant guest coming on the show, a giant guest book by our special guest booker, David Drogmeyer. You can find at Drew Talk SD on Twitter and his DMs are always open. So to make sure you guys don't miss it, go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and our show's Twitter page at Locked On LAC. You can also find the show on our Instagram at Locked On Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. If you guys want to call in and get your thoughts in on this game, you can call on to 323-524-7924 to try to get all of your thoughts in on the offseason, who you think is going to make the team. We're going to get into some more fan stuff next week for sure. But that's going to do it for us today. We will be back with you guys on Monday, so make sure you're back with you know for us this 53-man roster prediction. I mean, I think we'll probably have some surprises there. I think, as we learned last year, there's going to be some surprises that happen. So we'll also be here to react to whoever does end up getting cut. But that's going to do it for us today. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Until then, take it easy and go bold.